Some years back, the electricity legend photonic induction popped a 5,000 amp fuse. As far as I know, this is still the biggest fuse that's been popped on video. Well, ugh, I'm going to try popping a 6,000 amp fuse. This monster weighs something like 45 pounds, and it's the biggest fuse that I could find online. Now, it's not often that I can beat photonic induction at anything, so I felt like this was a good use of my batteries. I say batteries because I'll be using my bank of 400 car batteries to pop this fuse, instead of capacitors like photonic induction used. I can pull continuous currents of over 150,000 amps from this bank, so I think there'll be enough to pop the fuse. You'll be seeing a full video about these batteries on my main channel very soon. This monster has silver-plated copper contacts and has an impressive 200,000 amp interruption rating. That's one heck of a fuse. I'm going to start with smaller fuses to get a better idea of what to expect from the big one. In most other scenarios, a 500 amp fuse would seem pretty huge, but in this context, it's pretty tiny. What happens when I zap it with the batteries? All right, here we go. If you thought that was boring, well, it's designed to be boring. A fuse is supposed to break the circuit in the least exciting way possible. I cut open the fuse to see what's inside. As you can see, it's filled with sand, which prevents it from getting spicy when it blows. Some of the sand actually melted to the fuse element there. Here I have a 1000 amp fuse, and I'm actually going to cut it open first. That way we can at least see some sparks when it pops. This fuse looks to have parallel elements inside. I hope this one is more exciting than the last one. Nothing to write home about, but that vivid green flash was pretty neat. I can see the burn through there was a lot more, a lot more complete compared to the last one. That's probably just because I got rid of all the sand inside. I refilled the fuse with India metal to see if anything cooler would happen when it zapped. Probably should have done the math on that one because the indium didn't melt at all. So I think there's just way too much uh, cross-sectional area of indium. But look, that the magnetic forces actually bent those tabs there. Those are thick tabs. So that was uh, that's pretty silly. The slow mo shows that the extreme currents may have magnetically ejected the fuse before the indium could melt. Regardless, I doubled up the cable feeding the fuse for the next shot to play it safe. Alright, there we go. Yeah, I don't think there is a drop of indium left in that fuse. That just completely exploded. That's really, really funny. Oh, and there's a bolt there that I did not put I did not put that there. That just of course got magnetically sucked in as everything does. And let's go take a look at the current. 120, 130, 130,000 amps. Not bad. The slow-mo on this one turned out awesome, even though the clamps barely held up for the shot. Most of the indium was ejected as it liquefied, mainly via magnetic forces at first, and then when the fuse finally popped, it made an impressive explosion. Alright, now it's time to pop the 6,000 amp fuse. Now of course, being a 6,000 amp fuse means that it's meant to conduct 6,000 amps without popping. So something like this car battery here, I mean, it could short this car battery all day and it's not going to pop. I mean, it's going to kill the car battery first. So, this is where the 400 car batteries come in. So how much current does it take to pop this thing? Well, that depends on the duration of the impulse. My 6000 amp fuse is the top line on this curve here. So based on this, at 10,000 amps, the fuse will last about 17 minutes before popping. If you go up to 20,000 amps, it'll last about a little less than a minute. But of course, I'm most interested in this end of the curve. At 100,000 amps, it'll only last 10 milliseconds. Now, of course, the, uh, the actual peak current that this gets to before it pops is going to depend on how my switch wants to behave. But regardless, this shouldn't be very hard for my batteries. In the interest of making more sparks, I opened it up and emptied out all the sand inside. This does change its fusing characteristics, but I would argue that due to the nature of the continuous extreme DC currents I'll be feeding it, 
the fuse will now take an even higher impulse before breaking the circuit. The reason being is that without the sand, it's going to make some angry plasma. That's hilarious. It's just a bunch of smaller fuses in parallel. It's like that all the way down, isn't it? Fuselets all the way down. I'm not even going to bother cleaning the contacts here because it'll melt straight through all that, you know, char and stuff on there. All right, there it is. Got all the cameras going. Here we go. Let's pop it. Let's see. All right. I think I'm ready for this. I think I'm ready. I'm going to get my slow-mo camera set up here. Are all the cameras good? Think so? All right. Here we go. Jeez. I think I popped it. Wow, I can't wait to see what the, uh, what it pulled in the scope there. Oh yeah, big pulse, big pulse there. Oh, it's, what happened? What? It's not dead. No, no way. It, 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 it melted the contact block. It didn't blow up the fuse. That's crazy. What? It didn't pop it. What? Look at that. It melted the block first and it ripped up that C-clamp. There's only... That's insane! I'll just have to resituate that, because yeah, the fuse is completely intact. Wow! I was so confident that that was going to work in one shot, too. It's crazy. Sure enough, the close-ups show that the fuse itself was completely untouched by this. The sparks were simply from the contacts below burning up, and causing the C-clamps to give way as a result. Okay, so I... have I've changed this side to spring clamps, that way it can like follow through as any variations uh, burn out there. So yeah, let's let's give that another go. Dude, I can't I can't believe that this is taking me two tries. This is silly. All right, here we go. Okay, yes, that one finally popped it. Thank goodness. There we go. I'm surprised how clean of a burn through that was. It just completely vaporized those pieces in there. Kind of surprised just considering the voltage I'm dealing with is low. But that, that definitely did it. That was a full pop. The switch had a few hiccups there, but once it finally closed, the fuse pulled 150,000 amps. So that is why that was so violent there. Nice. The slow-mo shows that the fuse made an incredibly violent plasma jet when it burned through. Impressive. I ended up refilling the fuse with metallic sodium, but you'll have to wait for the main video to see what happened there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little teaser, and stay tuned for the full battery video. Finally, I'd like to shout out AnyDesk for both buying me these batteries and giving me the whole car battery idea in the first place. If you have ideas for ridiculous science experiments that you'd like me or another YouTuber to try, submit them at anydesk.com science. The ideas that are brought to reality will win cool prizes and lead to the creation of epic videos. Thanks for watching.